Hi everyone. I think we are on live on Facebook right now. So today is the first time we're doing the uh, Healthy You conference. Find health and life balance in your life with Qigong and other techniques, right? So this is your host, Master Teresa. I'm so excited I'm doing this. I'm, oh my, oh my God, maybe you don't mind me saying it. So today we welcome uh, Bas. Uh, Bas's last name is kind of long. It's Obdan Kelder. I've known him for from 2001, 2018 now. It's quite some years. So he's a very dedicated uh, person in martial arts, really. So he is the founder of the School of Indigo Qigong this year. So we welcome Bas, and he is also a Tai Chi and Qigong instructor certified from an early age, learning martial arts of Judo and Karate in Holland. He continued to learn Chinese Indonesian martial arts called Benjak. Benjak. Silat. 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 Okay, learning, getting better. Meditation and visualization practices within the arts introduced him firsthand to internal energy. So he has studied with uh, my teacher uh, with me from 2001. So, well, my teacher is, for me, is always is, right? It's the best Qigong teacher. So uh, we love him. So he uh, got the highest Qigong title from the Talent Bank of Chinese government back in 1995. And he also has the authority to select Qigong master for the Talent Bank of China. So it is really, um, really an honor really to study from him. Mm -hmm. um, and it's really an honor to actually uh, build a business for him too. So uh, from scratch, right? And then, and then this, this lovely young man, you, you are, what, are you, are you 70 yet? 70. <laughs> no, this is how you look at uh, 70 when you do Qigong. Right. So. So, okay, so he's qualified for a Canadian pension plan, too. So. <laughs> <laughs> but, but anyway, so that's the beautiful part of Qigong, is he also studied Taoism and herbal medicine and et cetera, et cetera. So welcome you, Bas. Thank you very much. Uh, so, happy to be here. Yeah, so can you tell me, uh, why do you like martial arts so much, right? Well, martial arts was part of our life in, in Holland at that time. Uh, I relate back to the early 60s when uh, um, there was a famous judoka um, teacher from Holland that was the first one ever from Europe to win the world championship against the Japanese uh, master in, in Japan. So ever since that time I, I started to get involved with judo and, and uh, took it on for many years and then moved forward into karate and other uh, fighting arts because that was part of uh, you know something that you wanted to do plus I think also uh, uh, in my age I, I needed to be physical because I was uh, let's say just a, a special child for my mother I guess uh, she wanted me to make sure that Your I mother. Uh, yeah she told me you better go and learn some uh, routine oh so, oh, so that's why. a lovely mother <laughs> yeah. so I, I know that you you also um, never stop practicing Qigong and then you never stop doing your martial arts. That's why after your retirement you actually uh, decided to teach more and formed uh, a school, right? Right. So, right. so I know you like, like it, but what, what's the drive really? What, why there's a drive to do more with uh, some people who consider this as crazy and some people think it's awesome, right? So. Well, I have about five or six classes uh, each week. Uh, I do a lot with seniors. Uh, yeah. I, I do a lot with uh, people uh, recovering with, with cancer. Mm -hmm. uh, I work uh, volunteer work at a hospice in, in Hamilton and uh, at a cancer center there too. Um, what I like about it is that it, you are able to, as a teacher, to give something back and give other people an opportunity to learn uh, that a lot of the um, methods of practice is good for themselves and once they start to tap into the uh, relaxation part and meditation part uh, they can take control of their life back again that was basically um, given away to somebody else or to the universe um, I feel that 
but teaching, we all have obligations to teach other people. So, just uh, I, I just really like to take information from other people. <laughs> so when we first met, I like back, I don't know, 17, 18 years ago. Right. So how's your health at the time? I know Kung Fu, you must hurt yourself with injuries. Uh, yes. Basically, you're I'd say a lot younger age-wise, right? Yeah. But then look why maybe it's the same. Um, <laughs> yeah, I didn't change much. Maybe a little grayer. <laughs> and my my uh, beard is a little longer. Okay. What happened is that um, I, I I had some internal injuries, and uh, I was searching for a when I came back to Canada from a uh, seven or eight years yeah. in Holland again. I was looking for a good uh, Qigong teacher, and uh, through the internet I found uh, found Master Wu. Through yeah. uh, my first email to you, I remember that in August in two, uh, 2001. She said, yeah, yeah, come on, on a Sunday. And I came on yeah. a Sunday afternoon. That was my first introduction to, uh, to yeah. really learning from a respectable uh, master who I followed for many years together with yeah, you. Yeah, we really and, just... Um, and, I, and that was yeah. it. As soon as I yeah. connected with him, I felt that this was what I needed to do. So, well, the beautiful part of, uh, I guess, the chi is it actually gives you that drive, right? I mean, that energy to drive to. He actually drove all the way from Hamilton. Yeah. Now, Hamilton and yeah. Toronto is like over an hour and a half driving, really. So he drove one way and drove drove one way back in between, spent a couple hours practicing, right? Right. So he, right. I bet he really loved it. If not, he wouldn't be doing it. No, I, I enjoyed <laughs> it. And, and it was funny because I remember still in those times when there was snow on the road and uh, yeah, the classes would continue. Yeah, you actually managed to And I managed to come here and, team, and I remember Master Wu then come to class and say, Oh, boss is here. Oh, the, oh and he was always yes. so happy yeah. uh, that all his students could come here on a Sunday morning and practice with him. So. Well, I was surprised that you uh, you drove that far because people really just really end up in the ditch of the snow. You know, it wasn't safe at the time, but he actually, I am just a martial artist, right? At, at like it's commitment. It, it, it's you, you make a commitment <laughs> you, you to learning, and that's what you need to do. <laughs> I uh, mean, that, you know, so you're going to die for it. No, no, no. I mean, I was always pretty much in control in my life. Okay, so he, he I was never I guess you must believe you have, you are a good driver, right? Absolutely. You have good tires too, I guess. Always, yeah, in the tires <laughs> in Canada. But I mean, it's it's a, a, a yeah. what what when you start a journey of learning qigong or any other modality of martial arts as well, is that you need to make that commitment for yourself. If yeah. you don't make that commitment, then don't start. Um, and it's not you know reading a book or getting a DVD or taking one seminar. No, it's weekly practices with a good, solid, uh, respectable teacher. And, and also then follow that up with your home practice that you, when you come back the next week, they could see that you have improved and you move forward and learn more. Wow. So we want to ask you too, so did you ever have any uh, hesitation about stop your Qigong practice no. or anything? Never. So, Never. So while you were learning, did it, did it ever give you big struggles that you cannot continue or something like that? Well, I, I remember in the beginning when um, you know, the teacher told us to get up early in the morning, so I uh, decided, okay, 5 o'clock would be a good time to start. 5 o'clock. 5 o'clock. Yeah. But, but my my mind would say yes, but my body would say no. I would say, no, no, it's so nice and warm, let's stay in bed. I said, no, no, I'm committed, I'm going to learn this practice. Oh, awesome. Get out of bed at 5 o'clock, nice and quiet, dark, yes. and start learning. Uh, I remember exactly. level 1 that time. Yeah. And, uh, so exactly. that's how you improve your... your uh, abilities to understand Qigong better. It's not about reading a book or following a DVD so much. It's about the practice. So you need to continue to practice. So since you are a volunteer at the hospital for the cancer patients, yeah. you must have a lot of uh, beautiful results that they share with you, the practices yeah. of the Qigong through you, right? Absolutely. They have to fill out a, a, um, a questionnaire. At questionnaire. The end of, yes, and on the questionnaire okay. they have to fill out what have, what have they improved, what have they felt, uh -huh. uh, of, of the teachings that I have given them yes. uh, and, and it always shows uh, a 4 or 5 out of 5 so it's always a very high number uh, mm -hmm. and it proves to me that uh, everybody will get the benefit out of but again the key is you need to commit yourself to the practice if you just sit there and you have an hour nothing to do then you are actually wasting the time you need to make sure you connect to the teacher and connect to the practice so we uh, we think 
it's a good idea to ask you to show some Qigong practices. Sure, I can. Yeah? What would you like me to show? Um, well, you are the the founder of your school, and then you 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 are what you are, right? So we don't tell the the founder of the school to tell them what they do, and <laughs> isn't it? Right? So Teresa would stop and withdraw myself. Also, it was then, but it's now it's different. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna uh, take the chairs away, mm -hmm. and then we can just let him uh, take take the space and do whatever he likes. So okay. we have time. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, sure. Uh, I wouldn't mind starting out by just uh, maybe even sitting. Uh, because there is a lot of sitting Qigong practices that uh, people should start enjoying. And that is making sure that you sit on a comfortable chair, the tip of a chair. Uh, you totally relaxed. Uh, calm your mind. Don't think about anything negative. Um, make sure that, uh, that you are um, um, calm, but the, the, the biggest um, improvement is the posture. So let's wait for a second. Okay. So we're going to start the practice. So just sit and relax in any position you want and uh, just follow through. So there's nothing right, nothing wrong. So if you don't want to practice, you like to watch, I welcome you too, but it's going to be very safe and uh, and, uh, and and let's start. Okay, so again, sit at the tip of a chair. So find yourself a chair that is a kitchen chair. I don't want you to find a couch or the, the side of a bed because those are not the perfect spots to practice. The key to the practice is that your body is relaxed but has a, a strength in the posture. The posture is important. If you don't have your posture correctly, then all the uh, lines of the uh, meridians and also the lines of your spine and your neck is not solidly in line with the practice. So you need to sit at a comfortable uh, position. You make sure your legs are open, shoulder width wide, your hands are upside down, just calmly, just above the knee. And you close your eyes. And the biggest challenge, especially in the beginning as a beginning student, is to calm the mind, to think about nothing. But think about, if it's too difficult, think about a spot that you really enjoy. It could be the beach, could be an ocean, could be on a mountain, could be in a forest, could be by a lake. Uh, going up north is a wonderful spot to practice, especially in, in the weekends and get up early in the morning sit by the lake and relax and just listen to the sound of nature and, and soften that so if you have any other uh, like telephones or radios or televisions on at this time I, I think you should turn that off so it's nice and quiet inside of your room you can even dim the light if you like because the more light is dimmed the better it is also for relaxation So you put your tongue on top of your palate, you breathe in and out through your nose. And your head is level, and your chin is slightly in. And that is to make sure that the spine and the top of your head are in line. You relax each part of your body. Let me start with the top of our head. Inhale. Song. Relax your neck. Inhale. Song. Relax your shoulders. Inhale. Song. Relax your chest. Inhale. Song. Relax your abdomen. Inhale. Song. Relax your 
connects you back. Inhale, song. Relax your arms, your hands, and your fingers. Inhale, song. Relax your legs, your feet, and your toes. Inhale, song. Relax your whole body. Inhale, song. Second time. Inhale, song. Third time. Inhale, song. You drop your hands, bring your hands forward, collect energy, bring both hands to just below the belly button. For the ladies in the audience, right hand first, left hand over top. For the guys, left hand first, then right hand over top. Just place them there calmly, your body is relaxed, you're at ease. You're still sitting in this wonderful spot where you are calm and comfortable and safe. Abdominal breathing is a practice to enhance and massage the internal organs. The diaphragm goes up and down, helps to take away some of the pressure on our heart, helps the blood go up and down. And the whole intent is to relax and massage the internal system. So how do we do this? Very simple, you inhale and you expand your abdomen out and you come to center. Then you exhale, and you bring your abdomen back in, and you count to ten. So inhale, abdomen out. Exhale, abdomen in. Inhale, count. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Exhale, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Inhale, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Exhale, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Let's do one more time. Inhale, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Exhale, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. This exercise is really helpful for people that are dealing with a lot of stress and anxiety on the chest. So make sure you can practice this also anytime, anywhere, by placing one hand on your chest and one hand on your belly button. And by inhaling and expanding your abdomen out and exhaling and bring the abdomen back in, you bring that anxiety, that stress level down for yourself. If you have trouble sleeping, it's a very easy exercise to do when you lay in bed. And I guarantee you, when you practice this exercise in and out, nice and slow, you will improve your sleeping as well. It's all about calming that internal system. There's too much stress going on. Next movement will be we're going to bring our hands forward, going to open our eyes slightly. And we have our palms facing at each other. And the opening is about the, the, the width of our nose. Okay? We're not touching the fingertips. We're inhaling and bring our hands open to about the width of our face. And exhaling and bring the hands back to the width of our nose. Your arms are away from your body, so don't make them too tight. 
Anytime it's tight, you're blocking energy. Bring your arms forward, nice and calm and relaxed. Inhale, open. Exhale, close. You can look at the tip of the fingers. Inhale, open. Exhale, close. Inhale, open. Exhale, close. Open to the shoulder. Inhale, open to the shoulder. Exhale, close. Back to the width of our face. Feel the energy between your hands. Inhale, open. Exhale, close. Nice and soft. Make sure you control your breath. So you inhale slowly. Exhale, close. So this is the uh, Master Wu's uh, signature form, inhale, which is the Wu's Health and Fitness Qigong. And then Boss has uh, a great love to uh, Master Wu uh, 12 step respiratory Qigong too. So we also have a video uh, that having Boss to be the instructor showing uh, one of Master Wu's favorite uh, form that he put together. So it's always beautiful to, to show different movements, right? Yep. Since you love that form so much, maybe. Uh, invite you to uh, make, I mean, instead of maybe standing up, maybe just sit down and show uh, a couple movement, moving the arms so that people see the arms can move in Qigong too. Okay. And then that would be uh, beautiful to show what the, what, you know, the, that's the story behind the, uh, the respiratory Qigong too. Uh, it was, it was created in the time of the SARS, right, you know, in Toronto that's a really, uh, epidermic, uh, you know, crazy time that everyone's not going out to the restaurant and then people worried about getting sick because of these uh, germs in the air and it's contagious, etc, etc. So at that time, the form has, was created for that purpose to straighten, straighten up our lungs, to, to help people uh, to not be sick, right, for the breathing. So we call it 12 step respiratory qigong right and and as as the master Teresa said it was designed to to help uh, enhance the uh, respiratory system so expand the lungs so there was a lot of and there is a lot of arm movements one of the arm movements uh, you can do sitting down you can also standing up and it's uh, very simple uh, you inhale you bring your hands forward you keep on inhaling, bring your hands forward to the side. Then exhale, you bring your arms down. And once you bring your arms down, there's this triple burning area on the side of your leg. You hit that three times. One, two, three. So inhale. Exhale. Hit it. Up, through, through. Inhale. Exhale. The next movement is you bring your arms out. You inhale to the nose. Turn your hands forward, you exhale forward, you inhale to the chest, you exhale, pull chi out, inhale, open, exhale, close. So again, so in.
So you can repeat those movements two, three, six, five times. Next movement is you bring your right arm up. You inhale, you turn, now you exhale out. Left arm in, in, ah. two arms in, So the key to the movement is if you breathe in slow, you make your movement soft and slow. Make sure you extend the arm out, bring energy, or exhale out, and slow. The movements always, like Tai Chi and Qigong, needs to be done slowly. You cannot do this blocking and hard. It always has to be nice and slow. So there is one that we stand up and we turn, we bring our arms here, we inhale, then we exhale. So in the form, there are actually 12 different sets of uh, small movements, so it's really enjoyable, so we really love it. So, so we can see that Qigong is really a beautiful movements. it works with the breath, with the visualization. So it really calm the body and mind together. So how would you explain um, Tai Chi and Qigong then? Well, when I learned from Master Wu and, and yourself, um, it was evident that Tai Chi actually, you can only have, be a good Tai Chi instructor and teacher if you understand Qigong. Because if you don't understand Qigong, you start with Tai Chi first, you're not getting the Qi in the Tai Chi. It, so, it is something that really needs to be in there. Yeah. And you need to learn how to breathe calmly, bring that energy in and out, and then move with the energy like the Tai Chi. Then you have the benefit from the Tai Chi. Otherwise, it's just a physical So exercise. I don't know how the Qi in the Kung Fu works, so, and, then, and then that's uh, always interesting for uh, Well, you have people. internal yeah. and you have external. Yeah. Right? So with internal, you're working on creating more power internally. With Qigong, because of the fact that you're massaging the internal organs, you can easily get <laughs> hit very hard and it won't bother me. But exactly. if I wouldn't be trained, then this would be a bruise. Or actually, if somebody hits me on the liver, I would have a liver problem. But because of the Qi and the power that you have internally in your system, you build more strength. So you're I, th I think also in uh, Keith, you're here, and uh, you're a martial artist. One of the things that I found is when I would punch, I can put way more emphasis on the punch, but then not only hitting the person, but hitting through the person. And that's what you learn with, with the Qi Gong. I think that the, the martial arts the practitioner becomes more more controlled in the energy and the power that they have inside. Otherwise it becomes very loose. Um, in the beginning when you learn martial arts, it's all about not the fighting or the kicking. But when you come to another level of higher learning, then you need to really control that energy. Because you know that every time I punch, I'm losing energy. But if I punch at the time when it's needed, then I have the best benefit. So, uh, so I'm just thinking about what can we help the audience to understand what Qigong is about. Really. I know that, oh, there are movements, uh, so we, we feel some of the movements, we talk a little bit about Tai Chi. So the Tai Chi benefit and the Qigong benefit, uh, well, I, I would tell people in my way is, well, when people have cancer, don't try to do Tai Chi to, to deal with it because it's not the right thing to do, but no. you do Qigong for the cancer, yes. right? So you can see that the therapeutic uh, healing of the Qigong is far superior than uh, the Tai Chi, and you won't go to try to do Kung Fu and take care of the disease, right? So the Qigong is very um, 
I guess the mind and the body creating the chi uh, so that it heals the body. Right. And then you also uh, go, you have classes with seniors, right? Yes. Yeah, yeah. seniors is, is a challenge because some of the seniors are, you know, they are they have uh, lots of arthritis, they cannot bend their back, yeah. they come sometimes in, yeah. a, in a very exactly. uh, tight uh, yes. body. So you try to get them to breathe better. I think the key to uh, getting to another level of learning is to make sure that you control your breath. The breath is, is so powerful because a lot of people are out of breath. They're always yeah. like breathing too much, there's too much going on, so more stress here. Exactly. If you can control the breath, now you have control of yeah. your body. I, I remember you mentioned to me when you first teach the seniors, at first it, uh, there were not too many people, but then you kept, you kept teaching years and years, right? Yeah. And then you, you told me that you have over 50 people in a class now or yeah. something? I have two classes. Isn't that amazing? Uh, two classes every Friday yeah. morning and one class has 35, the other one has 25, so yeah. together 60 people. Yeah, so the so seniors actually like yeah. Qigong, so we are, they love it. unfortunately, they love it. Uh, do get old, right? We do and, get old, exactly. unfortunately, so, and mm -hmm. the sooner you start, the better it is for you. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. But again, a lot of us, because yeah. of the, the West getting to the, the Eastern philosophies and, 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 and models of learning and healing, has taken such a long time to get to the West. Now we are embedding it, now we're grabbing it, and now each modality yeah. of learning, yeah. like even yoga is getting yeah. in, and, and yeah. Reiki is looking at mm -hmm. Qigong now to know, take yeah. something from, so they can become stronger. Yeah. So uh, back 20 years ago when I started, there was basically no Qigong in Toronto, almost no. like. No. And then I, I felt, gee, how can I open this market when there's nothing, really? And then, uh, so the, the journey is like, I always say, uh, if you like what you do, you just keep doing, and Absolutely. then you'll get you'll get to uh, where you want to be. Yeah. And I I uh, just really encourage the audience. Um, I just look at uh, Qigong seriously. So my father is ninety four now. So he also has um, he used to have like thyroid cancer, which he should should have died many years ago. Right. But he actually lived now to ninety four. So. So it's very interesting uh, to actually tap into the resources of the unknown, and there's a lot of science behind Qigong. And then uh, Tom uh, Rogers, the Qigong Institute, has a lot of research on, uh, right. on, I don't know, so much research papers of the world, so much he collected through the years. So thank you so much, Bas. Is there any more tips you want to mention to people? Or well, you gave a lot of tips already. I, I, I believe that, that Qigong is for anybody at any time. There is no age restriction. The only restriction there is, in my mind, is, is you yourself. Um, yeah. You need to start. And you need to find a respectful, qualified instructor. Um, that is the key to learning Qigong well. Yeah. Um, yes, you can buy DVDs, you can buy books. But you need one-on-one -on -one instruction or in a classroom to get that level of, you know, tapping into yourself better. Yeah. Because if you go and, and just read a book, you're not going to be able to feel the energy from the teacher when you're in yeah. class. And that's why yeah. I feel that you always should find a good teacher in your uh, area, connect with yeah. them, and Hopefully, learn from there's them. one in the area. Of course, yeah. So, so, so we are, actually, I am, at least, working on, a, and I did have an online program to train teachers now, Good. so that Master Wu's Qigong can go to uh, other cities. Good. So, awesome. Thank you, Bas. Thank you're you so, welcome, so welcome. much. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Okay, in the Chinese, you don't hug, but now I learned oh. to, <laughs> too, right? <laughs> Hugging is good. I know, but then, the, the, anyways, I'm just joking, anyway. So, yeah. so thank you very much, and uh, uh, thank you for joining us today. And thank then you. look forward to seeing you in the next episode, Absolutely. Uh, which is tomorrow. Thank, thank you, you very much. Bye.